I'm Larry Flick, and this is The Jolt on Sirius XM OutQ. And I um, want to thank the boys from Rent Boy for joining us. Goodness gracious. We had to hide the porn. From how, There's something oddly poetic about going from gay male escorts to one of the stars of Downton Abbey, darling. What do you think? Um, it's it's a it's a good link. <laughs> <laughs> I did a he brought like porn gift packs. I'm like as, as, before you walked in, I'm like, wait, 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 Spencer, wait. And I put the put it in my bag. <laughs> well I didn't bring you any of that, I'm afraid. So oh. I apologize for not bringing that. Well, with thank me. goodness, because I had plenty. <laughs> uh, so jo <laughs> uh, so Joanne Frago is joining Frogget. 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 So like like yogurt, difficult... but frogget. Yes, but it's very difficult to say. Even I have trouble saying it. I should, you know, I, I'm now married and I keep thinking I should really change my married name because it's so much easier to say. Can we but say what your married name my is? Name is? My married name is Cannon, Joanne Cannon. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. I know, but I see, do... now you've won a Golden Globe. Your, 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 your maiden name is etched on that trophy. I know, I know. Oh my God, what was that like? It was amazing. Was it cool? It was amazing. Yeah, I'm still. I think I'm still on cloud nine. It was just the, the you know, it was such a shock in the best possible way, and you know, such a surreal, wonderful, magical experience. It was, it was incredible. I, you know, we all watch those shows, and we all fantasize about what it would be like to be sitting there, right? Because when, especially when you're a kid, and everyone dreams of being a movie star or a television star when they're a kid, and you just, you know, you have a my night at the Oscars, and you have your I've lost face. Uh, yeah, I've done that. I've done that a few times. Now. I've, I've got that down to a T. That one. Yeah. So I, I was. <laughs> and then you have your winning, mm -hmm. and then you know, so so when you were a kid, what was your what was your make believe award? Was it like a, a bottle of oil, <laughs> a washing up liquid? Um, hairbrush. A hairbrush. Hairbrush. Yeah, I used to. Yes, I. I yeah, I practiced my award speech at, from the age of probably three uh, with, with a hairbrush. But, so cute. But I finally got two. Uh, so two cute. One. So I see. You got to live all of our fantasy. Mm -hmm. I know. Well, and one of my own. I mean, it really, really genuinely was and is a dream come true. And, and such a surprise. You know, I, 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 had, I didn't think I had a hope in hell, frankly, of, of, uh, of walking home with the award that night. And um, I think everybody could tell that by my reaction. It was, it was a very genuine, very uncool scream. And I spent about three seconds clapping for whoever the winner was because I was just on autopilot of... You yeah, know, until, you know, until it you... registered that it was my name, and then I was just like, "What?" <laughs> it was so decidedly not British, which I, I loved. Yes, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was fantastic. And then uh, not long after, uh, the cast of Downton Abbey was awarded with the Screen Actors Guild uh, trophy for outstanding ensemble. Yeah. So it's good to be uh, it's good to be Joanne Frogget. Yes, it is. It certainly is. And again, we were so surprised. We hadn't sort of worked anything out because. We, you know, we were fortunate enough to win the ensemble award at the SAGs two years ago, and you know we were again such amazing shows that I, you know, we all watch and love, and um, you know it, it was it was just dreamy. I mean, it's been the best January I've ever had. I'm oh, not sure how the rest of the year is going to be able to live up to it now. So well, just you know what, just have a nap during the rest of <laughs> yeah. it. So of course, you, of course, you know, Downton Abbey is uh, is airing right now on uh, Masterpiece via PBS on Sundays. And um, fifth season or series, yeah. if you're in the UK, and um, uh, let's just get out, right out of the way. Do you know if there's going to be a sixth season? I do, because we we have the read through on Monday. Yes, so I can I can definitely confirm there will be a season six. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so the read throughs on Monday, and then we start filming the following week. So yeah, I've read the first script, which is very good. Is it's it very really good. good? Yeah, it's great. It's really great. Yeah. And so do do uh, any of you have commitments to the show beyond the sixth season? No, but just because we, you know, in the UK, it works very differently from the US. Right. You, you, when you start a series, you never sign up for more than three series to start with. So we all signed for three at the very beginning. And then we renegotiated for series four and five. And then just before we started filming season five, um, they came through and asked, you know, for one more. So we're, we're on a one by one basis now. So we'll we'll just wait and see, you know, we'll just wait and see what happens. It's so much smarter than America because in America they sign you for seven seasons, and you you, you basically become an indentured servant. Yes. To whoever you <laughs> sign with, and and, uh, and 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 being in a binational relationship, having lived in the UK, being a diehard Anglophile from teenage years, I've always admired the way the system works in Britain because 
the quality control seems much higher and and steadfast than here. Uh, there are fewer episodes, so you're not watering down the plot. Um, and all of you who perform seem far more confident that you'll get another job because <laughs> you all walk away from shows, oh, we're done. Well, the thing is, I think, you know, it's a smaller industry in the UK. So, I mean, there's, you know, fantastic television and film, you know, come out of the US. It's the biggest industry for it. So, um, you know, but at home, you know, the budgets just aren't there to, to commit people to seven years. They just don't have that financial scope. So I think it stems from that, ultimately, that, mm. you know, the budgets are less. So they have to work on a, you know, on a smaller basis, I guess, more, you know, less episodes, um, committing the actors for less time. Um, but I don't know, you know, I don't know which is better, which is worse. I guess there's, there's good and bad to say for both. I, 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 I would agree with that. Again, that's uh, Joanne Frogert. Closer? Closer. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. How about we just say our friend Joanne? Yeah. From, from Downton <laughs> Abbey. Joe, that's even easier. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, uh, she plays Anna Bates and uh, having a very, very interesting season. Um, does, it, does it surprise you at all that people outside of your own country are so obsessed Actually, I think we might be more obsessed mm -hmm. than than your than your compatriots are with this show. I think it's becoming that way. Yeah, I mean, it's it, yes, it's been a, a wonderful surprise for all of us. I mean, we knew when we started filming this the first season that the scripts were fantastic. They, you know, as the viewers feel when they're watching, I feel the same when I'm reading my script. It's a page turner. I'm like, oh wow, what's happening next? What's happening next? Um, so. You know, we knew had a great cast, great crew, but you never know whether a show is going to take to people's people are going to take it to their hearts or not, and whether it's it's going to hit that that place where it becomes really special. Um, and it seemed to do that in the UK, and then sort of gradually but quite quickly, it started to do that in other countries. And I do think now, as we're in season five, it does feel like certainly in America, um, you know, it's almost becoming more popular than it is in the UK. It's still very popular at home, but people are sort of get more and more excited by it each year, which is lovely for us. It's, we seem a little bit less inclined for some reason, because we love to take things apart, but less inclined to, to take this show apart than, than has been the case in Britain, especially recently with the, all the controversy from last season. And we're just taking it in stride because we just love it so much. Oh, thank um, you. Do you, do you what, how do you keep Anna... Uh, as fun and fresh as as she is, because any character you play for an extended period of time can become a bit rote. Yeah, and that's the, that's the new challenge. You know, I've previously in my career, I've never actually done a second series of anything. Um, I've done the first series, and I was joking during season one, saying, "Oh well, I'm a kiss of death for any show because I never, <laughs> I know, I've never goes to season two." If I'm was, they called so, it. They called it a show killer. <laughs> so thank goodness I was wrong, and we're we're still here. Um, but that's the challenge. You know, it's it's. Um, I guess it's. You know, it's 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 different from if you're doing a, you know a theatre production. But say if you're doing theatre, it's you know that's the challenge to keep it fresh every night. Mm. And, and whereas this, obviously, you're doing different content but playing the same characters. So, you know, that's that's the the trap you don't want to fall into is becoming blasé about the character and thinking, oh, I know how to do this scene. It's similar to something we've done before. And um, so so that's it. You know, keeping on your toes with it and just just remembering to to find the detail in the performance all the time. And um, yeah, and that, you know, that's fun to do as well. But Anna is is the person you want to have as your best friend. Right. I always say that, so I'm yes. glad you think the same. Anna's the one you want. Yeah. But don't you, but you know, every once in a while I look at Anna and I just think, doesn't she just want to say, shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously. I feel like, I feel like, I feel like every once in a while off camera, Anna disappears to a local pub lights up a cigarette and drinks some whiskey and mm -hmm. just says, God, they're all fucked up over there. <laughs> yeah, that's what she does on her days off. <laughs> yeah. You're bang on cue. That's exactly what she does. Because yeah. she's so... She really is like the, the ultimate best friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's amazing. And I, but without being milk toast. Yeah, I mean, I, I fell in love with her the moment I read the first three scenes of the first episode I ever read. And, and Julian, you know, created all these characters so beautifully within a few scenes. And, and that's what I felt. I thought, wow, you know, I've, I've actually never played somebody that's just really good. And she's got a really big heart, but she doesn't suffer fools gladly. She's very strong. And I didn't want her to be wishy-washy and sort of, you know, I wanted her to stick up for herself. And, and I think you have to be a very strong person to 
to live your life by your beliefs, whether they be good or bad or, you know, whatever. Um, and the fact that she has got a, such a strong moral code, I, you know, I found really endearing about her and she's very loyal and, you know, and she will stick up for the people she cares about, which is what we all need a bit of that in our lives. We don't do. We? we do. Or we need someone like Anna to remind us of that. Yeah. Um, it feels like you've only been at this for a very short time. No, seventeen years I've Has been acting been? for. Because, because but wasn't wow. I mean? Because I first I first uh, became aware of you um, about five years ago, right? In, in our in our name. In our name. Oh wow! You got to see that movie. I'm oh my god, so good. Yeah, very different role to Anna. Very different role. Yeah. Well, and then she was in Filth. Yeah. Mm. Again, very different. Very different kind of movie. <laughs> Netflix, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a great Honey. movie. It's a great movie. It's, I mean. I can say that because I'm only in a small part of it, but, but James a, McAvoy's performance is incredible in that movie. The, one of the most fearless performances I've ever seen. Yeah, he is amazing. Yeah. yeah, but 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 you're pretty fearless too because you're playing, you're consistently playing women who don't seem at all like the ladies sitting in this room right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's you know that's the fun of my job. In our name, you know, I, I play the lead in a, a small budget movie in our name, and that was my character was a, a soldier that just come back from Iraq and was suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So a very, very different sort of headspace and character yeah. to, to Anna. And um, and that's what I enjoy. You know, I sort of pride myself on hopefully being versatile and I like to do different accents and, and play different roles, different walks of life. And um, and that's what, you know, keeps it fresh and fun for me. And that's, that's the best bit, you know. So how do you reconcile the fact that you're, from what I would uh, interpret as being uh, immersive to the point of disappearing into the character, but becoming well known enough to collect a Golden Globe award. Well, yeah, I mean, I think I just have to, uh, you know, you just have to concentrate on the day job, and everything else, you know, is is stuff that you can't control. And I, you know, like I say, this month has been incredible, amazing, and a total dream come true. But um, you can't think about awards and you know how you're perceived as a person when you're at work I mean you know my goal is to be the best actress I can be and to have a really diverse versatile career that that stems until I'm an old lady you know and that's all I've ever wanted to do um so the other side of it I I don't really think about you know I keep my private life quite private and then my work life is my work life that I'm very proud of do you think uh your 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 intentions uh come from the f- fact that you are british because the actors are schooled and brought up through the ranks differently than in other countries um i don't know because i think you know america has some incredible you know actors and, oh, and without some, question yeah, but and some here, of the people that i really look up to you yeah. know as well and in the uk so i don't i mean i guess i can't say because i don't really know how the yeah. system works so, so much in the states but um I mean, for me, that's that's just personally how I've always wanted to be. I've always wanted to be a character actress and and play character roles. And the people I look up to in the industry, you know, especially the women I look up, up to in the industry, have had those kind of careers, like like Maggie Smith, you know, Judi Dench, Meryl mm. Streep, Tony Collette. You know, all these women that are just really powerful in their performances, and yeah. you just you know sort of mesmerised by watching them and. And, you know, I, I, I hope to uh, one day have a career like one of those yeah, ladies. Like that would be good. <laughs> well on the road. But the reason why I ask that question is because it seems like maybe the, uh, my perception from the outside is that there's more support for proper training there than there is here. Here, we're having our arts funding uh, cut all the time in our school systems. Um, it's harder to be uh, a, quote, proper actor in America you have to kind of play the fame game a little bit more here than seemingly. I mean, yes, I know you have your, you know, your your tabloid mongers there as well, but the the, the divide is more uh, distinct. It seems it's a difficult thing because, as I say, you know, I started. I mean, my I started professionally when I was sixteen, and my goal has always been to be the best actress I can be. And as you sort of, you know, when I started, we in England certainly in the UK, um, they the celebrity culture wasn't as strong or, or prevalent as it is now. Um, so it was something that never entered my mindset starting out in the industry. But but as you sort of get older and mature, you, you also learn that it to be successful in this industry, you know, sort of a certain 
you know, a certain amount of fame, if you like, for want of a better word, comes with that. And although I've never craved that, you do get to a point where you sort of have to accept that that comes along with it if you want to progress. Mm. Um, so I think that's, you know, our times, I guess. And I think it's probably been the same in the US as well, that celebrity culture is is huge at the moment, mm. you know, and it's a, it, I, find, I find it a sort of strange thing it's that people say oh, i want to be famous like young people say i want to be famous and you're like well what do you want to be famous for and you know they say i just want to be famous and i find that a strange concept yeah so what do you like about being an actor i just love my job you know i get to play for a living really so were you because uh, that's uh, there to me there are two kinds of actors there are the kind who like to play yeah and there are the kind who are deep into the psychology of yeah well this also you know i'm fascinated i mean i have i do often get drawn to um you know quite heavy roles as well before my role on downton and she plays I'm, crazy people <laughs> <laughs> i'm fascinated you know i mean it's, it's the mixture of the two for me really you know I, I get to play i you know i get to be challenged i get to challenge myself do things that scare me which i think is is good for us all and also i'm fascinated by people you know people often ask actors you know what would you do if you weren't acting and i think I mean, it's all I've ever wanted to do, so I can't really say I'd, I'd like to do anything else, but possibly I would have been, I don't know, a therapist or something, because I'm fascinated by people and by people's lives and why we do things, why we behave in a certain way or how we get through certain situations in our lives. And and people's strength and true character never ceases to amaze me. And um, and that's what I find fascinating about sort of building a character, you know. It's exciting to hear someone so dedicated. It's it's a it's a really nice treat to meet someone so dedicated to the craft while having huge success because they they don't always go hand in hand. We very rarely get to meet those kind of folks. Um, uh, do you have now that you've been spending some time here? intentions of working here yeah of course i absolutely love to you know it's um because you're very exotic to us right now oh you thank you that, very right? much oh, well, Between... I'm, I'm not at home so that's very nice to but hear. you know what i mean it's very very <laughs> no because because i think the, i think the combination of the roles that have found their way to american consciousness that you've yeah. played and and downton and just the very nature of not being from here you're kind of like a tropical cocktail on a summer's Ooh, day to I us. Be back. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like back in back in Britain, you're you know you're you're I'm just one of the gang. You're, I know. you're Joanne, yeah. and yeah. you know saying when the hell is Olivia Coleman taking a fucking vacation? <laughs> Every actress in England ever... is saying that at the moment. No, I love her. She's amazing. She's brilliant, but would yeah. she please take a rest? She's like, girl, give us a, give us a break. Let someone else get a, work, a little bit of work. I love her. I know. She's such a wonderful woman as I well as being her. fabulous Kill actress. I to meet her. Oh, but, she's wonderful. But you know what I mean. So... Are you are you enjoying being the, the exotic tropical cocktail here? Well, of course, but I, I didn't quite realize I was, but I, I certainly will be enjoying it now. Absolutely. I was very excited Absolutely. when they told me she was coming. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, no, it's wonderful. It's, it's so wonderful to, you know, to have your work accepted, you know, in a, in another country and um, you know, and I've always wanted to work internationally, you know, I have before, but not on, you know, on the scale of Downton, obviously. Mm. And um, so yeah, I mean, I I'd, I'd love to work here. There's, you know, I I guess, you know, we're used to it as actors going where the work is so wherever wherever the work comes I, i'm happy to take a trip i can't wait to see what happens with you because yeah. what's so interesting uh, about you is you're not you're not at all what i anticipated oh what did you anticipate i anticipated someone <laughs> a bit more serious okay mm -hmm. yeah and but also i mean I, kn yeah, I know you're magnetic because i'm a big fan of your work but you're like proper movie star mm -hmm. oh bless you isn't she you know i'm not yes. gonna leave i'm literally staying here all day she's, if you're gonna tell me this. <laughs> but she's a proper movie star she could be like you know very kind of like english reese witherspoon here oh. Oh. couldn't you see that mm. although <laughs> I was, yes i wasn't a fan of wild per se don't do stuff like that but you everything else <laughs> she could else. have made wild work you might have made wild work for me but she, it didn't with her i'm just saying trust me but she, everything else she's ever if done, she could I'm make if it. she could make any character in filth likable because the whole idea of that movie is that nobody's likable <laughs> yeah absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's all good she can you, you got it oh, you're talking about you like you're not here i know right? I'm, I'm enjoying it <laughs> <laughs> It's a great confidence boost. I'll be getting on the plane with a smile on my face. Oh. <laughs> so, so Anna Bates, what are your fantasies? What do you wish for her? 
Oh, other than like a her. hot sex scene. Uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't wish that. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, no, no, that's fine. Like, I'm quite happy not to have a hot sex scene. Um, yeah, no, I usually I just, that's what they say, mm-hmm. right? They want their they want their characters to get naked. Oh, I don't mm-hmm. think anyone wants to see Anna naked. It's like she's too lovely. You don't want to see her in that light, do you? It's too. It's no. She's the best we, friend. She's we were not the hot sex scene girl. At the end of last season, just, so you know we can't have. I can't, I can't decide if I want if I want to see Anna. Drinking whiskey and smoking a cigarette, or caught in the cupboard with chocolate all over her face. I think that's more more than likely. I mean, I'd like to see them. You know, I'd like to see them. It's it's difficult because from a sort of viewer's point of view, and from you know just a, a love of her, I want to see her and Bates be happy and mm-hmm. have you know have a family and buy their little hotel somewhere and do all that. But obviously, from an acting point of view, it's nice to play the drama as well. So yeah. I like having the mix. I like having those moments where they're very happy and things are going well. And know, then but I like, the I like, drama also. I, I, I like the fact that I like the idea of Anna owning everything that's ever happened to her. Yeah. You know, in a way that says, I'm powerful, I'm exactly. sexy, I'm beautiful. I own this. Yeah, I and got coming this. through and, and just and finding happiness. Do you know what I mean? And that's I love, what I'd like for them. I, I, well. I, cause, because I think that you can, you, when, 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 when things happen to a character, there's this declawing that happens to them that becomes really disheartening and kind of, kind of ultimately renders the character impotent. Yeah. Well, and hopefully, you know, through the seasons you'll, and through the rest of season five, you see her building herself back up yeah. you know, and, and trying and sort of embarking on that journey of, of trying to you know get back on track a little bit and I want, trying yeah, I, to... I want her to be powerful mm-hmm. I think she might I think she will be I, do. I think I want her to be powerful I want her yeah. to kind of be her Ugh. yeah I, want her to I think she'll get there I think she'll get there definitely do Joanne so nice to meet you so that's nice I just said Joanne this time I know right <laughs> That's that's Joe Fro. How about we just call you Joe, Joe Fro? Fro. Everyone calls me on set. Joe Fro. That's my nickname. So yeah. I love it. I got lucky. Look for <laughs> Downton Abbey Sundays on Masterpiece via PBS, and uh, to be continued. I hope. I hope so. Yes, me too. Stick around. There's Yay. more to come on the Jolt.